Good morning, NCS. Hope you all are having a great day so far. We're going to head right into our chapel service here in just a minute. Can you guys believe that we only have two more chapels left? You have today's chapel, and then you'll have a closing chapel next week from Pastor Thompson. I hope you guys will tune in good today. I hope you guys will dial in. Pastor Sammy has an awesome message for you today about planning. It's a great one. Please, if you don't have your Bible and you don't have a notebook or pen, Go grab it now. You're going to want to take notes for today. We're going to sing a song real quick, a song I'm sure you all know. And then once that's done, I'll hand it over to Pastor Sammy, and he'll bring the chapel message today.
Hello, Newport Christian School. It's my privilege to bring you today the uh, message from the Word of God. Today, we're in the book of James, James chapter number four, and we'll look at verses 13 through 17. James chapter number four, verses 13 through 17. The Bible says in verse number 13, go to now, and God saying, I want to have a little meeting with you. Come here. Kind of like when mom and dad say, son, little Johnny or little Susie, I, I want to come and have a meeting with you. I want to talk to you. And so, you know, this is serious. And God says, come now. He says, go to now. He says, ye that say. So God says, I want to have a meeting with you because I've heard you say these things. And what he's going to do, he's going to correct something. He's going to correct their thinking. So he says, come now. Let's have a meeting, and because I've heard you say this, and it's incorrect. And here's what he says. Go to now, ye that say. What are they saying? Today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. So he says, come here because I want to have a conversation with you because I've heard what you're saying. I've heard that you got plans. You say you're going to go to a certain city. You're going to stay there for about a year. You're going to buy, you're going to sell, and you're going to get gain. Those are not necessarily bad plans. They're not planning to do something wicked. They're not planning to do something bad. But God says, listen, I'm going to have a conversation with you because it seems like you are planning out your life without me. It seems like you got plans and your calendars are full and you have predicted what you're going to do with your life. And God says, time out, time out. I want to have a conversation with you because I've, I've heard you tell this to other people and even in your conversations with your friends, I've heard you say how you're going to go to such a city, you're going to buy, you're going to sell, and you're going to be there for a year. Now, now here's what God says, okay? He says, let me tell you what this is all about. I, I have to interject here. I got to tell you something. Here's what God says. He says in verse 14, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. You know what God's saying? And so you planned out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you got your whole calendar full. And isn't this how we live our lives sometimes, especially throughout this pandemic, right? We had our calendars full. I went to my office a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, and I looked at the calendar for our ministry and I started exiting it out. I said, X, 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 we didn't do this. Lord, you didn't allow us to do this. And this activity didn't happen. And I just started Xing things out. Because sometimes we're guilty of planning and planning and planning and planning, but we don't check with God. We don't check with God. God says, I heard that you planned out your life. I heard that you're going to a city. You're going to be there for a year. Oh, really? And God says, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. Obviously, he's saying, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And another portion of the Bible, the Bible says, boast not thyself of the morrow or tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. In other words, we have no idea what will happen tomorrow or the next day or the year. I'm not saying we shouldn't plan. I'm not saying we shouldn't work. I'm not saying we shouldn't organize or strategize. But what I am saying is have we checked with God? Have we asked God about these things? God in his word is letting us know. He says in his words, in James chapter number four, he says, listen, you don't know what's going to go on on the day tomorrow. He says, for what is your life? He's going to tell them, here's a description of your life. Is it full of laughter? Is it full of days? Is it full of anxiety? Is it full of energy? And all those things may be true, but he describes it in the physical form. Here's what he says. He says, for what is your life? It is even a vapor a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. So God here is giving uh, the, the, the preciousness of what life really is. And so you've taken your life. He says, you're going to plan to go to a city for a year. You're going to be there. You're going to buy, sell, gain and all that. But you're making plans without me. I'm the one that breathed life into the nostrils of man. 
I'm the one that gave you the blood that flows in your veins. I'm the one that controls when you wiggle your fingers. And uh, if you can, you know, if you can move your, your eyebrows and, and people that know how to move their ears and all that, okay? Uh, I'm the one that gives you uh, the energy and I'm the sustainer. I'm the giver of life. And God says, this is what you should have done. You should have come check with me. I'm the boss. I'm the creator. I'm the almighty. I am Christ. I am God. And he says, listen, you should have said, man, let's check with God. Because God says your life is but a vapor. Your life is just a vapor. It's just like steam coming off of the stove. Uh, when moms or mom or dad is cooking, it's just like steam. It appeareth for a little while and then it vanishes away. And here's what God has to say about that. God says, uh, for that ye ought to say. So instead of you planning your life, you should have said this. You shouldn't have said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. No, no. This is what you should have said. God says, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or do that. In other words, he said, you should have said, if it's the Lord's will, Lord, if you'll let me plan this out. Lord, if you'll let me go to this city. Lord, if you'll let me buy this. Lord, if you'll let me sell this. Lord, if you'll let me get some gain. Uh, Lord, if you'll let our family go on this particular vacation. Lord, if you'll let me uh, do these things. God, I'm going to run everything through the filter of God. If the Lord will. What is God's will? Well, it's found in God's word. What is God's will? We have to pray about it. Check in with God. Here's what he says. For you should have said, if the Lord will, is it God's will? In verse 16, he says, but now ye rejoice in your boastings because you made plans without me, because you try to strategize without me, because you try to plan your life, not around my will, but around your will. A beautiful, the most beautiful example of this is the humility in Jesus Christ. If you recall, before Jesus went to the cross, he's out in the garden of, of Gethsemane and he's in the garden of Gethsemane and he's in the most intense moments of his human life. And here's what he prayed to God. He had a conversation with his father. He said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. He was not speaking of the suffering, but rather I believe he was speaking of the separation between he and his father. They've never been separated. He said, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, if it's possible. And the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, here's what he says. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And that's what I'm talking about today. Lord, I want to do this. Lord, I desire to do this. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Is this your will, God? Is this your will? Do you want me to do this? He says, your rejoicing is evil. God says, all such rejoicing is evil. When you rejoice in the decisions that you make without God, he said, that's evil. When you plan your life without me, that's evil. That's what God says. Verse 17, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And in the context, he's saying, if you know to ask me, if you know the good that it will bring about you when you come and you ask me. Children, sometimes we do things without asking mom or dad. And God says that rejoicing and boasting of that is evil. Yeah, I didn't have to ask my mama. Yeah, I didn't have to ask daddy. Yeah, I didn't have to ask the teacher. I just did what I want. And right, and that sinful nature is in all of us. But God says that, re that boasting is evil. You should ask your authority because they're under the authority of God. You should ask God because if you know to do good and if you don't do it, it is sin. It is sin. I like what Psalm 46 and verse 10 had the privilege to speak to the teens last night. And this is the verse that God gave me. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that he is God. And today I just want to bring you this message. Check in with God. Talk to God about it. Ask God. He is the supreme authority over heaven. He is the supreme authority over earth. 
He is the supreme authority over hell. No power of man, no scheme of man, no power of hell, nothing supersedes the authority of God. And so ask God, God, does this please you, Fred? You ought to say, if the Lord wills. Well, what a privilege it is to speak to you today from the life-transforming power that's found in the word of God. We miss you guys so much and looking forward to seeing your faces next week. Man, can you believe school is out? You'll have plenty of time check in with God and see what he has in store with you uh, this summer. May God bless you and hope to see you soon. Thank you.